Okay, Raccoon's video on Friday, the 1st of November, 2019. Do hope you are doing well. So, this little video, I want to talk about coffee, because uh, the coffee chart is starting to perk up. So, um, here we've got usual kind of setup, a uh, daily chart of coffee. So, at KC, that's a continuous contract. KC is the symbol for coffee. And I've got my usual kind of views of the world side by side. One is price-based only, and the other one is kind of volume, average trade size and volume momentum together. So on the right-hand side, we have all the better sine wave indicators uh, on one chart. We've got the support and resistance lines from uh, the low, intermediate, and highest time frame. The low uh, are little dotted lines here. This is the intermediate, and then the big, uh, strong uh, support and resistant lines are the highest time frame. I actually like looking at the cycles uh, below the price bars, just looking at the highest and intermediate cycles here. This is the highest ones are more bold uh, than the intermediate ones. And you'll note on the better sine wave chart, we've been kind of going down, down and down, but now we've got <clears throat> a bunch of end of trend signals kind of gone off uh, down in the 90s. And we've had a Particularly important one is pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame. There were these uh, kind of solid lines here going off, syncing up with pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame. And then we got a support coming on the intermediate time frame. So intermediate meant went resistance to support down here. So a little bit of a triple kind of down there in the uh, 95 kind of region, kind of down here. And then in the last couple of days, what we've done is we've busted up through resistance uh, to show strength here. Uh, markets just open. That's what that little bar is kind of going on at the moment. So a couple of days ago, we got a breakaway move. We kind of came back. But yes, Yesterday's activity, Thursday, we broke above the high of that uh, kind of strong uh, trending bar here, closed above it. And so it uh, looks like coffee might be uh, on its way for uh, a little bit of a move to the upside. Let me show you this on the volume momentum and professional and amateur kind of side of things. This is volume momentum underneath uh, the price bars. And you can see, you know, in this move down last year, we kind of broke to 115, 110 here with exhaustion sell. Blue professional bars start to get interested here. We get a short covering rally here. So this had been a strong downtrend all the way down. But then as soon as we started to kind of break above a trend line here, we got all kinds of stops being hit and people kind of being taken out of positions. <clears throat> and that covering activity was so strong that it actually generated an exhaustion buy pattern, which means that's kind of a strong um, short covering. Gets everybody out of the positions and it means that kind of coming down to these new lows, we got less and less uh, selling going on. So professionals pick it up again on this little dip down into 100. On that little dip down, 105, they looked like they were interested. And then lately we kind of broke as far as kind of 94 kind of down here. And now we're starting to come out of that. So in my mind, we've got enough activity kind of down here. We've got our exhaustion patterns in from a while ago. Um, blue professional bars started to get interested at 100. And the 100 level is absolutely key. And we're starting to break into an uptrend here. So that's the coffee chart. You might be interested in taking a position on uh, in the futures contract of coffee. One of the other ways you could play it is the ETF. I don't think the ETF is particularly interesting. Um, it's not got a lot of leverage. It's kind of a straight ETF. And uh, it's not you know, uh, a super big ETF. There's not a lot of assets under management in this one, but the one to play is J-O, uh, Joe. And, you know, 3334 uh, is where it was uh, trading yesterday and kind of looking for a breakout in that. You don't get exactly the same patterns uh, on the ETF when you look at it kind of side by side. Certainly, we've got the strength going on here. We didn't get a neat little pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame. Uh, the volume patterns, um, you know, you can see a little bit more activity here down at 32s, 33s with blue professional bars. And here, the same kind of thing kind of going on as those professional patterns on the uh, futures contract. But I would say plot the highest volume instrument uh, to track the market, and that would be uh, the futures market, the KC, and then take your positions uh, in the tradable, whatever you want to trade, whether you're trading the kind of the futures or the ETF kind of here. 
So there we go. That's the uh, coffee chart. Just a little note on kind of the ag sector in general. I do uh, track it on my big picture kind of uh, side of things. This is uh, where I'm looking at all the, first of all, you know, the Forex uh, contracts to see where the money is flowing in terms of countries, but also in terms of asset classes where it's flowing. Uh, got the equities side of things here with the E-mini, EEM, which is Emerging Markets ETF, gold on this side. All the interest rate sensitive stuff. So we got uh, US bonds, uh, HYG, which is uh, junk bonds, and then IYR, which is real estate. So that's all interest rate sensitive. And then on the commodity side, it's uh, CL for crude, HG for copper, and DBA is an ETF that's uh, broad and tracks all of the ag kind of complex. And <clears throat> it's just not been interesting for an extremely long time. Let me just pull this up on a weekly chart. Um, you can see here that ag has just been in a, a horrible kind of decline for, you know, what is that, eight years uh, or more. I mean, if, looking back, I mean, it's it's 10 years plus in terms of what it's been going down. At some point, this will bottom, this kind of ag sector will bottom uh, and we will kind of rally um uh, strong in all of the ag kind of side, but uh, there are some tradable opportunities that they pop up, like you know uh, coffee right now. But in general, that whole kind of uh, complex is not particularly interesting. But uh, you know, trading goes in cycles. You know, we all get interested in various things that are hot. You know, the equities uh, Nasdaq boom was hot into 2000. Then we got into forex. Forex was hot for three or four years as all the kind of big forex trends kind of took place. Uh, then we got into the commodities boom after you know the. Um, uh, crack in the equities market. Everybody got interested in commodities for two or three years. And then, you know, after that, it was cryptos, Bitcoin and uh, related stuff. Uh, at the moment, we're kind of back into uh, equities to some extent. You know, we've got gold that's kind of uh, looking interesting uh, for people. But the cycle will turn. And at some point, uh, ag uh, sector will be uh, hot and interesting. And everybody talking about whether they've got a position in wheat or you know, soybean or whatever. So uh, just not not yet. But uh, get ready for that because it will it will happen. It will have its day in the sun. Um, but you know, we're not seeing uh, big um, kind of complex moves in that sector quite yet. We're just seeing kind of individual opportunities that I think are kind of tradable. So there we go. That's uh, coffee. We're going to be checking that chart pretty closely over the next few days and see if this actually does develop into a really round sound bottom down here at 100 and we get a nice kind of trending move in coffee.